Hey guys, it is Tyler here back once again with another episode of Assassin's Creed The Truth. Now in this episode, I originally looked at simply trying to go through the Isu Temple messages in Assassin's Creed Origins and decode them individually. But after a lot of time spent working on this video, it became something a little bit different. In this video, I want to talk about the future storyline of the modern day and beyond in Assassin's Creed based on what these Isu messages in Assassin's Creed Origins are trying to tell us. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. Break the code, break the node. This line defines the entire future of the Assassin's Creed modern day storyline. So what exactly is the code? What the hell is the node and how do we break them? These questions are the key to everything going on within the Assassin's Creed game storylines moving forward, and are first introduced through Assassin's Creed Origins Isu Temple messages spread throughout the game. There are six Isu Temples that can be found in Origins. The first is found through the main campaign, during the Hyena Assassination Story Quest, while the other five are found throughout the open world. These messages within the open world are activated using the collectible silica found mainly within tombs and occasionally you might find some scattered around the desert. These messages are left behind from the Isu, the ones who came before. The messages are directed through Bayek to our new modern day protagonist, Layla Hassan. They each have an individual message, meaning and purpose, but all tell of an underlying story that impacts the future of the entire Assassin's Creed franchise. In this video, I will attempt to piece these messages together and find a meaning that can show us what lies ahead for the franchise. I also want to address something else. After the first recording of this video, a 7th Isu Temple message was found by user NightmareT12 on Reddit and a video published by Leo K on YouTube. So I'll leave a link to this video in the description and to the original Reddit post. This message can only be accessed after defeating Flavius and Cyrene near the end of the game, and before you go and meet Aya, before she leaves for Rome. So once that happens, you can't actually listen to this message. This message can be found in the vault underneath Siwa, underneath the Temple of Amun. I will not be going into detail of that particular message in this video, as I do not think it adds anything major that the other messages don't already suggest in just different words. Also, it is not quite linked enough to that it impacts or fits into these other messages majorly, so I just wanted to address that now before we go on with the rest of this video. When it comes to the main six messages we'll be focusing on, each of these messages are introduced by the same voice. An Isu that refers to the time in which the message was recorded, not long after the Toba catastrophe, where a solar flare wiped out most of the human and Isu population on Earth about 75,000 years ago, referred to in these messages as the Great Catastrophe. The voice itself is also referred to as the Messenger, while the main dialogue is actually done by different voices, presumably Isu, in every message. During one of these dialogue segments, the line, break the code, break the node, is said. It is actually inaudible when it's first heard, and can only be understood if you play the audio of it backwards. After listening to all the segments several times, and getting to grips as to what it all means, that line is by far and away the most significant. So let me break down to you why this line is so important. To do that, let's first ask the question, what is the code? Let me make it clear that none of these answers are given to us directly throughout the messengers, but implied through the underlying stories they are telling to the player. To put it in layman's terms, the code is simply time. The Isu Temple's dialogue segments 1, 2, and 3 give us varying details of time, what it is, how it works, and how we as humans have only a very basic understanding of its true meaning. The first segment introduces the idea of the world being one big simulation asking questions to Layla about how sure she is that everything around her is real. I mean, we know simulations are possible. Layla is an anatomist after all. What if none are real? What if everything you know is false? We ran thousands of simulations searching for the right version, searching for Desmond. We know from previous Assassin's Creed titles that the Isu have the ability to see and manipulate time to a certain degree in the way they are able to communicate with Desmond and now Layla, without actually being there physically. 
we as humans were not meant to have these abilities that the Isu do, which is elaborated on in the second segment, which talks about how human language and how it has boundaries to it, how there are boundaries to us in more ways than one. No surprise. You were designed to have boundaries after all. There is more out there. So what boundaries are they referring to, though? What is it we can't see? Time. We know it only as a concept, not as something we can see. The Isu can. The Isu can see and understand time totally different to the way we do. One of the most important quotes explaining this is in segment two. The codes, equations that define life. They are nestled deep within every star and every moment of death. Every second that passes is a word, a symbol, all part of an intricate yet simple language existing within the framework of time itself. It is the one rule which applies to us all, immutable, inescapable. The code is a bridge, a single point of cohesion between your civilization and mine. It is a language that can be read, that tells of what was, what is, and what will be. A language that we who came before can read, though you cannot. The voice talks of time and how it is boundaryless. We through language cannot conceive of time's true capabilities. That which makes up time, the Isu refer to as the code. The ability to see, read and manipulate time. This is the way in which they have been communicating through time throughout the franchise. The sixth sense that we still do not fully understand. The code is time, and time is code. We've seen the Isu's work in trying to manipulate time when they tried to save the world from the Great Catastrophe the first time. The third segment refers many times to the stories written on the walls, which in retrospect is simply an analogy to the Isu's ability to see and read time. What is, what was, and what will be. The message tells of the story of them trying to stop the Great Catastrophe before it happened, but they failed. We failed at modifying the line. We failed at adding a single dot. It was clear. We were to be messengers at best. But messengers to whom? To you. This refers to the messages to the future. To stop the catastrophe from happening again. To Desmond and now to Layla. But why Layla? Hasn't Desmond already dealt with all of this? We now have a greater understanding of time in this universe. Of the code that this important line we are breaking down refers to. But the code must be broken. That starts to seep through in the dialogue of segment three. The reader has no power. He is but an observer. But the author? The author invents the future. The author owns the future. The message tells Layla she must not simply be able to read time, but change it. Alter the calculations of existence, just as the Isu did. Break the code. Break the node is then uttered backwards. We have a basic understanding of what the code refers to now. So what is the node then? Well, the node can simply be put as an unavoidable moment in time, a point that is already defined. A node could be associated with, I guess, the Great Catastrophe. The fourth dialogue segment talks about what happened back on the 21st of December 2012, when Desmond saved the world from a repeat of the Great Catastrophe. How humankind was saved, or so we thought. Time is unyielding. It always corrects itself. We have our own understanding of time, and how humankind sees it. But there is more. As we now know, there are points of time that cannot be changed. These are referred to as nodes. Within the linear continuity, there are nodes. Choke points. Moments where algorithms converge the flows of superposed possibilities to a single moment, where only one absolute truth is possible. Paths are fluid, continuous. Nodes are static, changeless. The message tells of why the catastrophic node comes again so soon, for all humankind has done in these past few centuries. 
the world wars, developing nuclear weapons, and the many other horrors we have brought upon this earth. We know what nodes are, but what specific node are these messages referring to? What node is coming that needs to be broken? And so I wonder, can you feel the wave collapsing, trying to course correct Desmond's act of defiance? The incoming node needs the world to end. In this specific simulation of time, the node exists that needs the world to end. The question isn't how the world will end, but when, and how do we stop it? Looking back at the first dialogue segment, there's a quote that says, The question isn't whether or not you are in a simulation. What matters is how much of your free will is actually yours. The free will to what? To affect time. If there is a node, then there is no freedom around that. That time is coming no matter what. But what if you can break the code to not just be able to see and know time, but to control it? You break the code, you break the node. This line isn't just an instruction of what to do, but how to do it. If you can break the code that is time, you can find a way to break the incoming node that needs the world to end. So we know what this line, break the code, break the node, means. So where does Layla start in breaking the code? Well, these dialogue segments also start to give clues. The fifth segment asks the question, what is reality? The fact we all perceive a different reality than everyone around us. And that is by the chemical designs of our mind. We have six senses, you have five. Can you guess the one missing? We were not designed by the Isu to see time, to be able to stretch through time itself and to see all realities, all possibilities. Overload your mind's capacity. But how? There is a cage that has been put around the human brain by the Isu. The messages are encouraging Layla to break the cage around her mind. To think bigger, but to think simpler, just to think different. The sixth and final segment found under the Sphinx is where you receive the Isu armor. This segment tells of how the code can be broken, how Layla might bend time and change the node which lies ahead for humankind. Change your mind, subvert your perception, stop this world, bend it into something new. Layla must go beyond what even the Isu could do at the end of their time on Earth. It is not enough to tell time. You must learn time. To work with your shielding disease. The light. Reality is a simulation. Break the code. Because this is a simulation, there is a code to time, as we now understand. It is not invisible. It is possible to interact with it, to view it and to change it. The messenger talks about how they were not able to break the code based on the way they were actually living their lives. We found solace thought it would help us rule the world. We were wrong. Order never served us. It has kept us within the code, within the boundaries. The mind must be open to everything in order to break the code. The way in which the Isu lived was in opposition to the way necessary to stop what was coming. You cannot control time by controlling the physical, by following order. It is about being different. Being out of order, I guess. Take an unexpected turn away from the path that is drawn straight ahead of you. Your animus is different, as is the mind that imagined it. It could escape the code. It could do that leap and make possible a decision that defies the order of things that are. Remember, nothing is real. Everything is permitted. There's Layla's first step, through her animus. The messenger says, remember, nothing is real, everything is permitted. Not as a way for Bayek to come up with a creed. Bayek cannot even hear these messages. Time works differently when these messages are delivered. Bayek is there, but he does not hear. To say, remember, nothing is true, everything is permitted, is to tell Layla the ideology that can break the code. It is not to reference the creed of assassins philosophically, but literally. To say that nothing is real is to say that all existence is nothing but a simulation. There are no beginnings nor ends to possibilities. To say that everything is permitted is to say that if we are truly in a simulation of time, time has no restrictions. It can be moved, woven, authored. It can be changed. The code of time can be broken. 
and therefore the incoming node can too.